This is the new menu that comes up when you put the device in the car kit. It's sold separately. Uh, there's also a separate menu icon for it so you can load it manually if you want. Uh, nice big buttons, just easier to use um, when you're in the car. Navigate to McCaffrey's Supermarket. See the little timer? It'll automatically go if you don't press the button. That way you don't have to intervene. And here are the local suggestions. We're going to pick this one here. And it's telling us how far away we are while it's uh, getting the signal from the GPS. Feet, turn left at Sheffield Drive. Since I'm not in the car, I'm going to walk you through manually. You can see it's a 3D view. Moves through the turns nicely. There's also some advanced functionality. Uh, you get Street View, although it's been a little bit difficult to bring up. There it goes. So you can actually see what the intersection looks like, and I have to tell you that is exactly the intersection and, and the orientation it should be. One of the things you'll note, though, this is a beta, and sometimes the navigation's a bit off. You can see we could have just driven straight down Hecock and turned into the supermarket. Instead, it sends us all the way around in this weird, weird route. There is no issue with that road. It's a regular road there, so I'm not sure what's going on. In general, the systems work pretty well, but there are some issues like this where it's just totally off where the road names are wrong. Another thing that bothers me is, um, well, I like the fact that it refers to things in quarter miles. It sounds like quarter miles. Uh, I didn't even know what it was saying at first. It's also very easy to find points of interest in the area with the voice dialing. I'm just going to... McDonald's. And you can see some of the McDonald's restaurants in the area. Just like you would expect, um, full layer support, which means we can pull up satellite data and traffic data as well. And we can always tap on one and get directions or navigate directly to it. Head northeast on Spruce Mill Drive toward Sheffield Drive. Android 2.0 comes with a new HTML5 capable browser. It also has a new visual look to the bookmark system. Let's see, we're going to pull up Yahoo Finance over the 3G connection here. Most sites look very, very good. Everything looks just spot on. Uh, there are some weird formatting issues, though, with uh, some tables we've seen and things, you know, I've got a couple of bugs marked out for Motorola. Um, some minor issues in uh, more complex sites like uh, WYSIWYG editors for the WordPress admin, things like that. But in general, browser's quite nice. Uh, new interface for dealing with Windows, too. You can more easily open up Windows and see what pages you're on rather than, you know, the visual uh, icons for it. They actually just list the page, which makes it easier. And just to show you what it looks like, we're going to pull up the Mobile Burn web page. It takes a few seconds before it starts loading. It's a fairly complex site, though, but you can see it looks quite good. There's no flash support, um, although we're hoping that flash support will be added in the beginning of next year, 2010. Uh, Adobe's been promising it for a while, but you can see the Really good looking browser in general. Double tap zooming. It's not the full intelligent zooming like it doesn't automatically wrap text and um, zoom to an appropriate area just for the section you tap on, but it's still pretty good. And you can always manually zoom still with the old type control. It's just the double tap does a quick zoom in and zoom out, which is good for most situations. You load the camera by long pressing the camera shutter button. It vibrates a little bit when you do so. You can see there's a little slider switch there for going between um, video mode and camera mode. I've been pretty unimpressed with the camera. Notice there's a red focusing indicators in the corner. It did not get a proper focus here. There's so many situations where it does not get a proper focus. Um, I've, it's really been quite difficult to uh, get sample photos at times. If we turn on auto though, hopefully it'll get this picture since it was on macro mode. There we go takes the photo. photo will automatically show up in the corner here so you can get to the gallery quickly. Uh, and while the photos have been unimpressive, video has been really fantastic. It's 720 by 480 pixel um, video, 
five frames per second um, and really looks sweet. But let's jump into the gallery here. No swipe controls, which I still find to be very odd. Um, just some, I was testing some macro focus flash. You can see how the flash is very, it's just very um, centered. You know, it, the edges are very dark. It just doesn't really work very well. And again, some while focusing in the auto mode, trying to get some macro shots, it just never worked. These pictures are all soft. You can see nothing was ever focused properly. It really doesn't do a good job. There's some other new functionality in the device. Um, Bluetooth OBEX support, so you can uh, send and receive images from other people via Bluetooth. Uh, jump in the gallery here, you'll see that there's actually even a separate folder just for things received via Bluetooth. Uh, one of my issues with the device, in spite of all the good functionality though, is, is that it's difficult to use one-handed. This power button up top and just the, the sheer size of the device, uh, and it weighs about 171 grams and you know six ounces or so. I'm, I'm a big guy and I have a tough time activating this one-handed. It requires a lot of flip-flopping and it's just not convenient because there's no hardware buttons down here. You can't just hit the menu button twice to unlock and activate the device, which I find to be a real pain in the ass. Um, keyboard bothered me a little bit at first, but I've gotten quite used to it. Uh, still, it's, it's the proper layout. Um, even if the keys are small and butt up right against each other, I've still been able to tap out messages pretty quickly, so I'm, I'm not too worried about that there. And the processor has proven itself to be really, really fast. Uh, startup is about 42 seconds on this compared to uh, a minute for the click, which I guess says something. Um, but apps have run really well. There's still some stuttering in you know, the animations and the swiping and that kind of stuff. But in, in general, everything has worked really, really well. And I've had um, very few complaints with the device. So there you have it. That's the Motorola Droid for Verizon Wireless. And I'm Michael Orl for MobileBurn.com.